Hi friends, welcome back to new lecture. Today we are going to discuss much more about research design. Till now we have seen research methodology first chapter, and in the first chapter we have discussed many things related to that. And actually, research design this particular step also we have discussed in the first chapter. But now we are going to see in detail how research design is done. What are the parameters of research design? This we will discuss in this chapter. Okay. First of all, we will see what is meant by research design. meaning a simple definition is given here a research design is a arrangement of condition for collecting and analysis of data in a manner that aims of combined relevance to research purpose with economy in procedure now here two three main important parameters are there arrangement of condition for collection and analyzing of data how you are going to collect the data how you are going to analyze the data that conditions will be defined in the research design in a manner that aims to be combined relevance to research purpose with economy in procedure so these all things all things means what collecting a data analyzing a data these all things we should do it economically in a procedure so generally research design means our simple design like a concept whenever we go for designing of any component what we do we decide a dimension we decide a material we decide its a size and shape we decide its color everything we decide when we go for a normal kind of design of let's say pen so for the pen we are going to decide all these things similarly when we go for research design we are going to decide all parameter related to design how you are going to collect data how you are going to analyze data what is the procedure used for collecting data what is the procedure used for experimentation etc etc these all parameters will be discussed in or discussed or decided in the research design okay let's go for further in fact the research design is a conceptual structure within which research is conducted it constitute the blueprint for a collection for the collection measurement and analysis of the data so it represent a blueprint for what for collecting of the data measuring data and analysis of data at the same time it provide a structure it provide step by step procedure for doing all these things as such the design includes the outline of what researcher will do from writing the hypothesis and operational implication of the final analysis so it starts with writing a hypothesis and it goes for a final analysis of the data so it starts from very best and it goes to the end of the research okay so meaning we are going to continue in brief the research design must at least contain what it should contain a clear statement of research problem so it should include a research problem procedure and technique to be used for gathering an information it should have a procedure it should have a technique to be used for gathering an information how you are going to collect or gather the information that procedure and technique it should include the population of studied and method to be used for processing and analysis of data so we are going to define a procedure we are going to decide a population for what for a sample size we are knowing now what is mean by population what is mean by population from which we are going to collect a sample size okay so deciding of research problem deciding of procedure and technique for gathering information deciding of population deciding a method for processing and analyzing data is called as research design okay so we have seen what is mean by research design its meaning in detail we have discussed here okay now let's go for need for research design why it is needed to go for research design let's read it carefully A research design is needed because it facilitate the smooth sailing of various research operation so because of research design what it happens smooth sailing of various research operations various research operation it will be carried out smoothly if you do research design because in the research design initially we will decide all things methods etc if you are not decided method and if you go for research then it may not be carried out smoothly so for that purpose it should be decided earlier thereby making research as efficient as possible yielding maximum information with minimum expenditure of effort time and money here minimum expenditure of effort effort we are having minimum time we are having less and money we are having minimum so in order to reduce effort time and money it helps the research design at the same time research 
carried out as efficient as possible because of what because of research design so research design plays very very important role without research design you cannot carry any kind of research okay moving further just as for better economical and attractive construction of a house we need a blueprint well thought out and prepared by an expert architect similarly we need a research design or a plan in advance data collection and analyzing for our research project okay so here what happened here example of home is given whenever you are going to build a home or house you required initial design you required where which kind of column where which kind of beam is there what kind of shape is there that all you decide initially and then you go for building the home similarly when you go for research research design plays a very important role because it decides how to collect data how to analyze data and how to conclude it that will be necessary okay moving further research design stands for advanced planning of the method to be adopted for collection of relevant data the technique to be used their analysis keeping in view the objective of the research and availability of staff time and money this is actually repetition what we have discussed in the previous slides further why it is needed the de design help the researcher to organize his ideas in a form whereby it will be possible for him to took for flaws and inadequacies so this is very important let's see once again the design helps the researcher to organize his idea in a form whereby it is possible for him to look for a flaws and inadequacies so to determine flaws and inadequacies also the research design helps because if you are decided earlier and if something goes wrong the why it has gone wrong which step you are not followed that also will be understood such a design can even be given to other for their comments and critical evaluation in absence of such course of action it will be difficult for a critic to provide an comprehensive review of proposed study okay this is quite important that once you do a design you can give that design to the expert person and you can check that whether it is possible or not if it is not possible why it is not possible you can discuss with that expert person so you will be knowing if any problem any flaws are available in your research in advance so that so that what happen you can do the corrective action and show once again to the experts now features of good designs so just now we have seen meaning of research we have seen need of research design now we are going for feature of good design a good design is often characterized by objectives like which design is called as good design it should be flexible it should be appropriate it should be efficient it should be economical and so on okay these are various parameter and if these parameters are there we can say it's a good design it's a good design what is meant by flexible flexible means what some minor changes in the procedure data collection etc it should be allowed it should not be firm if it is firm and some minor changes of a 2% 5% 10% is not allowed then it's not called as a flexible design so flexibility is required but we because we don't know what happens in practical on paper we can decide that okay, this 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 these are expected but when you go for an actual field and doing a research some kind of flexibility near about 10% should be allowed so that it should be carried out further appropriate appropriate means what it should be focused on what conclusion what expectation is there that focus should be there it should be efficient efficient means what it's related to efficiency economical it's related to money so you should not spend too much of money for that research and so on there are many other parameters so flexible appropriate efficient and economical these are important parameter which you should consider okay generally the design which minimizes a bias and maximizes the reliability of data collected and analyzed in a considered is good design so what is good design they have given a criteria minimizes bias and maximizes reliability of data the bias should be minimized and reliability should be a maximum for data collection and analyzed in a considered good design okay so we want less bias and we want maximum reliability of data collected and analyzed in the considered good design the design which gives the smallest experimental error is supposed to be best design in many investigations smallest experimental error is very important if you are having smallest experimental error that's quite simple 
it will give it will be considered as a good design similarly a design which yields maximal information and provides an opportunity for considering many different aspects of a problem is considered most appropriate and efficient design in respect of many research problems so here important part is a design which yield maximal information so we should have a maximum information and provides an opportunity for considering many different aspect opportunity for many different aspect of a problem is considered as a most appropriate design okay and this we have consider the what are the features of good design why to which design you will called as a good design that what we have discussed concept relating to research design there are some concept dependent and independent variable so these are various concept which we should study for understanding the research design extraneous variable control then confounded relationship research hypothesis experimental and non experimental hypothesis testing research experimental control group treatments and experiment experimental units these are various a point you must study to understand what is meant by research design and this we are going to discuss in the coming lectures thank you